we're going to take a look at Chris Ria on compact disc. This catalogue was reissued around 1985-86. That's when the disc started coming out. He was signed to Magnet Records from his debut album onwards, but Magnet was bought out by Warner Brothers sometime around the mid 80s. So his stuff was released on Warner's until the contract ended in the year of 2000. So let's take a look right now. So we're going to kick off with whatever happened to Benny Santini. Benny Santini, if you are into Rhea, will know that the record company thought that it might be a cool name <laughs> for Chris Rhea. But uh, he said no. And stuck to his guns. So whatever happened to Benny Santini. It's just a bit of a joke. It contains a hit, Fool, if you think it's over. It was one of his first hits. Um, I think that he actually released a single back in 75 or 6. Whatever happened to Benny Santini itself. Uh, it's just a story of a guy who became famous, had a couple of hits and then disappeared. Hence the title. It's not a bad album. It's a bit, you know, middle of the road. Direction isn't strong here yet, you know, the songwriting is. Production isn't bad. It's produced by Gus Dudgeon of Elton John fame. Here you can see it's Magnus, but it's East West. Here's the Warner era CDs. It's, it's not bad. I don't listen to that much. There's better to come. Next up is Deltix. This is from 1979. This is a much stronger album. His personality is more, more focused here. And some great songs on this. Twisted Wheel. It's almost reminiscent of Elton John, Part Time Love. Things That Lovers Do. Dance, Don't Think. Rain Cutting the Rose. That's a great track. Sounds like a Neil Diamond track. Uh, really, really good. Uh, Cenotaph, A Letter from Amsterdam. Deltics. Deltics were um, diesel locomotives uh, run by British Rail, I think from the 50s on. Diamonds, she gave it away. That's another nice track. Don't want your best friend. No qualifications to Seabird. Yeah, this is much stronger than that one. In a corner, I think. This contains the lyrics. Produced again by Gus Dudgeon. And um, in the early days, Chris used different session musicians. In the mid 80s, he kind of had a core band, which is why the albums became a lot better musically. Next up is Tennis. This is another strong one. I, I like this album. It's uh, strong. I like the artwork as well. Tennis itself, um, kind of a moody song with uh, a pretty, um, <laughs> it's not a happy song in other words, yeah, about terrorism and about all the world problems and stuff like that. Do you like reggae? Do you like tennis? Sweet Kiss, that's kind of throwaway. Since I Don't See You Anymore, that's a brilliant track. Dancing Girls, that's not bad either. No work today. Every time I see you smile, it's a nice, slow song. Forever and ever, it's kind of, a, you know, kind of a, how will I put it? Kind of a soul element to that. Good news, friends across the water, and in distant summers, only with you. It's kind of half disco, white funk, and then stick it. Stick it's a great band, it really is. Yeah, I like this album. Yeah, it's just some good material on it. Song writing is oh, this box. I'll book to them. Raphael Ravenscroft on saxophone. You remember him from Baker Street by Jerry Rafferty. Mm. But again. Only session musicians. Tennis would be one of his 
albums that people don't really know that much about, but it's still a good listen. Next up is self-titled Chris Rea from 1981. Um, I think the record company were going to drop him after this one, I think. Just slipped by. Um, Loving You is on it. That's a good track. If you choose to go, Guitar Street. Do you still dream? That's another good one. Every bit of my heart. Goodbye, little Columbus. One sweet and tender touch. Do it for your love. Just want to be with you. Run away. When you know your love has died. <coughs> song writing is quite mature on this one. And we'll give some of the songs on this cover by other people as well. And just the lyrics in. Produced by John Kelly. Mm. Yeah, but again, not one of the stronger ones by any means, but still, it's not bad. Next up is Water Sign. This was released in 1983. This album was a very, very big hit across Europe. Yeah. Nothing's Happening by the Sea, Deep Water, Candles. That's a great track. I love Strange Ways. Uh, I really like that. Kind of reminds me of Private Investigations by Dire Straits, somehow. Texas, Let It Loose, I Can Hear Your Heartbeat. That was a big hit across Europe. Midnight Blue, Hey You, Out of the Darkness. The album itself, lots of um, it's a gold disc as well, by the way. I think Warner's did that in the late 80s. They had certain albums that sold a certain amount, I think I can't remember. Gold, um, I think I had... Um, I know I have Around the World in the Day by Prince, and it's got the gold disc, I think Christopher Cross, the first album, I had that in the gold disc as well. Water Sign, yeah, it was quite popular. Uh, yeah, the songs on this one, you know, they sound like demos, you know, they're, they're, there's not a lot of substance. They're, they're still good songs, but there's you know, drum machines and stuff like that, and uh, so it's, it's, it's the album isn't musically rich or anything like that. Next up is Wire to the Moon. This is from 1984. This is a good album. It's actually quite strong. It's one of my favorite Chris Rea albums. This one is a Magnus uh, CD and it was pressed by a PDO um, in West Germany. This is an original. You know the discs are quite smooth and they always seem to have this kind of filled in middle. Great discs. This is a strong album, um, Bombolini, it's a nice intro, kind of serious track, um, kind of fake pan pipes on it. Touche de Moore, that is kind of a reggae hit, Shine Shine Shine, nice soul track, Where to the Moon is a great track, kind of reminds me of Fleetwood Mac, I don't know what it is but I love it, that's another great song, that was a single. Ace of Hearts, that's one of the highlights from the whole album. Um, Holding Out is another great track, and Winning. Uh, kind of reminds me of Late Dire Straits. This was produced uh, by Chris and David Richards. Um, everybody knows David Richards worked with Queen in the late 80s in Montreal Studio. Yeah, so Wire to the Moon, yeah, I could, I could recommend that. It's one of my favourites. Next up is Shamrock Diaries. This is from 1985. This was a very popular album at the time. Big seller as well across Europe. The songs are quite mature on this. Steel River, about the dwindling um, shipping, uh, shipbuilding industry, I think, in in England and stuff like that. And the recession during the Thatcher era is fantastic. Stainsby Girls, I was never mad about that. It's about his wife. Chisel Hill, it's a nice track. Josephine on this is the original version. Um, I think from 88, 89 on, on pressings, there's a French version that was released in 1987, I think. It's a little bit more like chic. So if you want the original Josephine, you're going to have to get this or the um, remastered edition that came out there a couple of years back. Again, this is a Magnus pressing. This is one of the first, uh, first press. One Golden Rule, All Summer Long, Stone, Shamrock Diaries. It's another great track as well. Love Turns to Lies, Harry Cohen. So on this album, he has a core band that seemed to stay with him for a few, good few years after this. Um, so yeah, this, this, the playing is quite solid. You've got Max Middleton, 
on keyboards, uh, fantastic. He's played with Jeff Beck and Kevin Leach. Um, Owen O'Neill on bass, fantastic. Moving Hearts, he played with Christy Moore. Martin Ditcham, drums. Um, so yeah, Mel Collins saxophone. This is, um, yeah, great lineup. Robert Awahi, Simon Nicol, uh, guitars. Yeah, this is it's a digital recording as well. Um, I think it is. Um, I can't remember now. It says DDD on the disc. So, it sounds quite clear as well. It's very, very, very clear. So there you go, that's Shamrock Diaries. Next up is On the Beach. This was a very popular album back in 86. Chris supported Queen live at Slane Castle on the 5th of July. I was actually at that gig. And the first act was Fountainhead, a band from Dublin. The second act were The Bangles. Yeah, then Chris Ria. Yeah, that's right. Uh, Chris got three standing ovations. It was incredible. Um, I remember just... I didn't know anything about him at the time, but I can remember he came out in a kind of a Miami Vice style suit, <laughs> kind of a kind of a top color, and um, the band were on fire. Oh, and O'Neill, just standing there, you know, effortlessly, and you should have heard the. Oh, what a gig! It was just I knew nothing about him, but I knew once I heard him live, I knew I liked his music. Then after that, um, you know, on the beach, little blonde plats, Giverny. Lucky day just passing through, it's all gone. Hello friends, two roads, light of hope, off immer und ewig. And then it's three bonus tracks on the CD, Freeway, bless them all, crack that mold. And there's another very good song as well from the uh, It's All Gone mini LP from 86 called Look Out For Me. And it is absolutely fantastic. Pity that it's not on this. It's on the reissue. Which, uh, yeah, I like this album. It's quite mature. Yeah, pretty mature. Yeah. Light of Hope is a great track as well. Yeah. So, um... David Richards was also involved in this. He mixed it. At Montreal Studios, Switzerland. So, yeah. That was... A studio that Queen actually bought. Dancing with Strangers. This is from 1987. Again, not a bad album. There's a good bit of material on this. The CD contains bonus tracks. Opens up with the joys of Christmas. That's not one I'm really fond of. Um, I can't dance to that. Yeah, not great either. Windy Town, fantastic. Kind of like Dire Straits. Gonna buy a hat. Again, that's not really for me. Curse of the Traveller. That's not bad. It's pretty nice. Let's Dance. That was a big hit in 87. Okay, Sarah. Josie's Tune. Loving You Again. I really like that one. Uh, great video for it as well. All the band messing. It could have been a hit for the Four Tops. It's got the Motown thing going through it. That Girl of Mine. September Blue. And then you got I Don't Care Anymore. Donahue's Broken Wheel. And Daniela's Breakfast. Jerry Donahue. plays guitar on this album. The legendary Jerry Donahue. And you got the core band on this, Martin Ditcham, Bon O'Neill, um, Kevin Leach, Davies Balan plays pipes on um, one track. And then pipes, let's dance. So that's not a bad album. It's, I think there's just too much, too many tracks on it, you know. Again, it was produced in Mountain Studios, produced by Chris Ria himself, mixed by John Kelly and Chris Ria. Hmm. Jim Beach Management, uh, he's Queen's manager. He was Queen's manager in the um, 80s. Next up is New Light Through All Windows. This is the best of Chris Ria, but all the songs here have been re-recorded. It's kind of a live feel to them in the studio, produced by Chris Ria and John Kelly, engineered by Justin Shirley Smith. It contains 13 tracks, most of them were 
It's Let's Dance, working on it. That's new to this compilation. Ace of Hearts, it's a great track. Josephine, Candles, On the Beach. Fool if you think it's over. I can hear your heartbeat. Shamrock Diaries, Stainsby Girls. Windy Town, Driving Home for Christmas. You need to love that or hate it. <laughs> and Steel River. The version of Steel River on this is fantastic. It's a great jam at the end. It's not bad. And they're on fire. Um, recorded a lot, really recorded a lot of her stuff. And, um, yeah. yeah. The lyrics in here. And, uh, that's the remix. It's worth having. Uh, some of the songs, I think, things like. Um, where is it? Uh, Windy Town. I think the original version is better. So is Josephine. Uh, Maze of Hearts. I prefer the originals than the ones on this album. But it's nice to have it. You know, it's 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 a bit unnecessary, but it's still nice to have it. Right, The Road to Hell. This was released in 1989, and this was a massive hit. This was probably his biggest album. One of his most popular, anyway. It's one I was never really into, um, and I still must admit I'm not really into it. It's got the Road to Hell Part 1, which is kind of atmospheric, and then Part 2 is the song itself. You Must Be Evil, Texas. That's about getting out of the rain-soaked country of Britain and moving out to Texas, where everything is big and sunny, and they've got, you know... Everything is better. Far away cows. Looking for a rainbow. Your warm and tender love. Daytona. That's about a Ferrari as far as I know. That's what they always say. I just want to be with you. Tell me there's a heaven. Yeah. I was never really into this album. And. You know. I don't, I don't really listen to it that much. Yeah. But. The, you know. the It was. Very, very popular at the time. I mean, everywhere you went, it was Chris Rea, Chris Rea, Chris Rea. Auberge. And I think that's French for in, an inn, where you go for a, your lunch when you're driving around in one of these cool cars that Chris used to own. This was released in 1991. Again, the mature album. Um, Auberge itself is quite a powerful piece. Uh, Gone Fishing is very soft and gentle. It just kind of floats along. You're not a number. Heaven, that's a nice ballad. And then Set Me Free, that's a great track. It's got strings and everything on it. It's a very strong track. Again, that reminds me of Dire Straits. Um, Winter Song, that's a bonus on this edition. That's a nice track. Red Shoes, it's a bit forgettable. Sing a Song of Love to Me, that's a nice track. Every Second Counts, Looking for the Summer, that was another hit single from this. And You My Love, that's kind of something that he could have released any time in the 80s. And the mention of your name. Mm. Let me just get the lyrics in this. Note. Note else inside there. Oh yeah, there you go. It's Auberge. Next up is God's Great Banana Skin. This is from 1992. He was churning them out by now. This is one I liked it when I when it came out. When I when I got it, I, I played it a lot back to. Uh, Nothing to Fear is a great track. Uh, Miles' is a Cigarette is fantastic. God's Great Banana Skin. Kind of blues rock. Wouldn't be for me. 90s blues I don't really like. Too much pride. That's not bad. Boom Boom. It's a kind of throwaway. I Ain't a Fool. There She Goes. Not bad. I'm Ready. Black Dog. Soft Top Hard Shoulder. That's another great track. Uh, very like Dark Straits. But this isn't really... This isn't really an album I put on that often. I, I, I just think... Sounds quite clean as well or something. Um, digital recording. It sounds pretty pretty clean, it's kind of a sterile quality to it. It's only okay, you know. Wouldn't be it wouldn't be my favourite. Mm. Yeah. But anyway, there you go, that's called Scraper Dance It does exist, and there it is. Next up is Espresso Logic. This was released in 1993. Popping out an album a year at this stage. Again, I liked it when it came out. I listened to it a lot back in 93, but I kind of fell out of favour with it. I still prefer anything from the mid-80s over these early 90s albums. 
Espresso Logic itself isn't bad, a bit long. It's kind of all these kind of fancy African drums on it. Red is kind of a, a slow bluesy song. Soup of the Day, I, I really don't like that. Johnny Needs a Fast Car, I like that, that's a great track. Between the Devil and the Deep Blue Sea, not bad. And Julia, it's got, again, big drums on it, uh, kind of irritating. Summer Love, that's a beautiful track. Kind of Italian style orchestra, you can really, really feel the sadness in that song. Oh, that's a great track. New Way, that's only alright. And then Stop, and she closed her eyes. That's kind of a meditation piece. But, yeah, I don't want to listen to that often. Here you can see Lavazza Coffee. Thanks to Lavazza Coffee. They must be giving. Um, Chris free coffee. You get nice gold pages in this. Gold ink. I can still, I can still smell the ink. <laughs> yeah. Incredible. Nearly 30 years old. So there. Next up is La Passion. This was a soundtrack album. Released in 1996. I think around this time after Espresso Logic, Rhea was in ill health, I think with peritonitis or something like that, and uh, he was quite ill. Um, this one is a movie that he made, and um, it's it's got all the usual ingredients of Chris Rhea's music, kind of Mediterranean sounds, and kind of jazzy rock flavoured but there's a lot of strings on this so it's a soundtrack for the movie with some songs in there as well Shirley, do you want a Ferrari? Um, and Shirley Bassey appears as well um, it's bad, it's quite relaxing you know it's slow moving there's a few songs on there like I said wouldn't be essential, but it's still worth having in the collection. I've actually never seen the movie myself, so I don't know what it's like. Right, so, so yeah, that's the passion. The passione. Not bad. And, uh, you know, worth getting, like I said. Next up is the Blue Cafe. This is from 1998. And not a bad return to form. Yeah. Uh, square peg, round hole. Miss your kiss. Shadows of the big man. Where do we go from here since I found you? Thinking of you. As long as I have your love. Anyone quite like you, sweet summer day, stick by you. I'm still holding on. The blue cafe. I like the artwork in this. It's really cool. This good nice as well. Mm. I wasn't buying his stuff back in '98. I, I kind of stopped buying the stuff after Espresso Logic. Uh, yeah. I just didn't look filling out the collection recently. Um, there's a little strat. Yeah, I remember he played that guitar at um, the Slain gig and I was always wondering what was the, um, the sticker. It's like a map, you know. can't remember. He had one in blue as well. But, um, yeah. So there you go. That's the Blue Cafe. Next up is the Road to Hell Part 2. This is from 1999. This was a project that Chris more or less did himself with a producer. Lots of drum machines and stuff like that. It's almost like an electro version of Road to Hell. Um, I kind of prefer it than Road to Hell. Kind of of its time with the kind of, again, kind of a trip hop kind of beats and stuff. And a bit of techno in there as well. But. Um, I didn't buy this when it came out, I only got it recently. 
and um, I, like I said, it's it's not bad for kind of completists. Um, it's still Chris singing over music that sounds like music that he's already written. Um, so yeah, mostly John himself. So yeah, someone's on the same type of team. Um, produced by Kaiden KQ Quinn. Um, engineered by Neil Amor. Drums programmed by Kaiden Quinn. Um, yeah, so it's really just a, an electronic album. The novelty in his catalog, really. And finally, we have King of the Beach. This was the final for East West Warners. Back to more direct songwriting here. Not a bad album, mellow. Kind of a follow up to 1986's On the Beach, I guess. Again, it's quite electronic sounding. The band are back here. Max Middleton, Sylvan Mark, Martin Ditcham, Robert Awai. But uh, it, it sounds quite electronic, you know. Um, the album was written on Parrot K, Turks and Caicos Islands, January 2000. So, um, Martin Ditchum drums percussion. Yeah, the drums sound quite electronic. Back then, a lot of albums kind of sounded the same. You know, they might have real drums, but then they're sampled and squished and squashed and put into the ringer. Yeah, so, I love that album. Uh, King of the Beach is a bit funny title. <laughs> Yeah, so there you go. That's it. That's Chris Rhea on Warner Brothers. Magnus, Warner Brothers, I guess. Um, so that's it. Thanks for watching. Feel free to subscribe and take care.